The waters of Wisconsin and the Great Lakes are an integral part of the state's economy. From recreation and tourism to industry and consumption, clean water is essential to our daily lives. Agriculture has a large invested interest in the Wisconsin economy, contributing $88 billion annually. Still, some of the effects of agriculture on our water resources come in the form of nutrient runoff and soil erosion. But farmers understand these issues now more than ever. The 10 farms that make up the Upper Fox Wolf Demonstration Farm Network dedicated themselves to being part of the solution to these water quality issues through conservation practices. They are not only sustaining their businesses, but also the shared natural resources that make Wisconsin unique. The Upper Fox Wolf Network consists of the Wolf River, the Upper Fox River, and Lake Winnebago watersheds. The network covers about 6,000 square miles of which the demonstration farms themselves are scattered throughout. One of the main goals is to showcase and share the effectiveness of conservation practices and innovative ideas to address soil and nutrient loss that degrade water resources. BMPs, or Best Management Practices, are practices that we put in place in farms to help reduce soil and sediment loss from fields. We're looking to reduce the impact on water by having these best practices in place that look at both economic and water quality issues. We had a rain event here that would have been in 2012 towards the end of May after we had crops planted and we had six and a half inches of rain. We were, we were full tillage here yet. After that rain, we had some devastating washouts. Then and there, I knew I had to change going forward. To watch our soil wash away was, was not gonna keep working. So from that point on, I was looking at strip till, no till, cover crops, and just trying to see how I'm gonna work it into our operation. And over the years, we've went little no till, and then we started some strip till, and now I'm 100% no till strip till on everything. We're pretty happy with the results. Soil health factors into our operation is a key driver behind everything that we try to do. We try to no-till as much as possible, try to use as many cover crops as we can. We've backed off on the amount of crop inputs that we have to put on. If we have a legume cover crop, for example, we'll typically put less nitrogen out the following year. It also kind of reduces a workload as well because we're not making all those tillage passes like we used to. I used to farm around 1,100 acres and it would take three weeks to pick stones on that 1,100 acres. So when I went to no-till, didn't have to pick stones for three weeks, so I was able to run almost three times as more land than the 1,100 acres with the same amount of time. I was able to jump from 1,100 to 3,600 acres of operating in the no-till system. It saved a lot of labor, a lot of fuel costs, a lot of trips across the field. I started out basically using minimum till, and now I'm leaning more going to no-till, trying to put a cover crop on every one of my acres. Soil health is my big thing, and that's why I went to cover crops. I'm trying to build organic matter. We are probably 95, 96% pure red clay up here, so soil tilth is a huge issue for us, and we struggled at first getting things into the ground, and when we started, implementing cover crops. Our soil tilth dramatically increased, our organic matter started to increase, and it just made the whole system work very, very well. We predominantly use cover crops on our wheat ground. When we take off our wheat, we'll take and we'll cover those fields with manure, and then after we're done with the manure, we'll take and put cover crops out there, and it substantially reduces any weed control that we ever have to do the rest of the year. The benefits I've seen from cover cropping is that we've been able to go in earlier with the cover crop in there. We're in a heavy clay soil, it takes our soils longer to dry out with the cover crop in there. It really mellows out the soil, we can get in earlier. After going to some meetings, we realized that this was our next step for no-tilling. The better the fertility, get better organic matter in our soil. We began rotational grazing in 2010. Low disturbance manure application, it works out real good, mainly because we do some applications during the summer. We have a lot of manure to move on this farm, and so if we can move some on the wheat crops during the summertime, it just helps us with our application later. And just not disturbing everything has benefits for washouts and protecting the water. 
We've got buffer strips. We do some no-tilling whenever we can. Now we're using the low disturbance toolbar for manure, and we're gonna be no-tilling after that, too. Adding harvestable buffers to our farm has been good economically wise because we don't have to plant corn there and spend a certain amount per acre planting corn to see it drown out and not do very well. We harvest a certain amount of grass off there each year, it captures lots of nutrients. The contour strips that we have are kind of unique because they were already in place when I started operating that farm. One of those strips hasn't been worked in about 10 years and the other ones are probably getting up close to seven or eight years without any sort of tillage on it. It's really unique how that soil is different than some of the other land that we run that has been heavily mold board plowed for years and years and years. And how that, that soil reacts differently when you work it and the kind of crops you get off of it and how it reacts to stretches with no moisture or little moisture. When looking at conservation practices, we want to know that they're effective. And so ways we can do that is to use visual inspection to actually look at and see what differences we can see in fields next to water bodies. Soil health testing to see what it's doing to the soil, helping that soil retain nutrient rather than soil loss. You can see trends of how the soil is improving, how the crops look after time once these practices have been installed. To start doing more conservation practices, you just have to try different things. See what your soil is like, what your crop rotation is like, and how you can put different parts of conservation into your soils. Every farm's a little bit different. You know, my neighbor might implement one thing, but it might not work for me, but something might work for me that doesn't work for him. As time goes on, you learn that what works, what doesn't work, and you go on from there and use that experience to do better next time. Take small steps, try it. Take 10 acres, do things like that. If you can find some kind of a mentor, whether that be like an NRCS agent, a local farmer, somebody to bounce ideas off and help you through the process and make it definitely a lot easier. The biggest thing I found that failures were a big thing, but I wasn't gonna let that stop me because I wanted to know what I could do better and then go right back and try it and make the improvements and get it. And 99% of the time we could win in the end, but we had to do changes to make that work. My goal in life is before I die, I'm hoping to have better soil health than when I moved here back in 1981. We do not have this land forever. By conservation, we're maintaining our dirt here and actually building soil. I feel that's a very important part of maintaining agriculture. When we think of the fact that we are, as farmers, using the water as much as everybody else, so the quality of our water and quality of waterways is, is really important to us. It's an investment, but the return on it, as far as building our soil and leaving it better for the future, is the way I look at it. I want to give my kids a chance to farm, whether they want to or not. I want to improve it. I want to make it better for them as they come. Farmers have always been stewards of the land, but as we learn more about the connection between land and water, farmers are being asked to do even more. Thanks go out to the Upper Fox Wolf Demo Farms, as well as to all farmers who are adopting conservation practices for leading by example and demonstrating how agriculture can have a positive impact on our environment. With the support of project partners, both public and private, the tools available to farmers will continue to grow. As a community, it's up to all of us to work together to keep these resources usable and plentiful for future generations.